Hey there, welcome to another Slightly Redneck video. It's time for another quail update, standing out here by the quail hutches. And uh, I got some more questions from viewers that uh, range from things from, uh, you know, if you've got a male that's just not interested in the females, how are you going to handle that? To uh, an in-depth review of the uh, watering system I'm using right now. And a special bonus for you guys if you stay till the end of the video. Um, you'll just have to wait around to see what that is. All right, the first question comes from a viewer by the name of Gavin is the awesomest. Nice username there. And uh, what he's asking is, uh, he wants to know if inbreeding's all right. He says he raises rabbit. He knows that line breeding and inbreeding is common when keeping meat rabbits, but he wants to know if it causes any issues. Uh, you know, great question. I'm concerned about that as well. Um, there's no way for me to know which mothers and fathers produce which birds, you know, once you get them all mixed up in there. Um, and everything I've researched and my personal experience, I've not had any problems with inbreeding. Now, what I will say is that I do switch my roosters out. I just bring a new rooster in every couple of, you know, about, about once or twice a year, I'll bring a couple of new roosters in. Um, as with any other animal, you really want to try to avoid breeding brother and sister together. You want to, you know, mother to, to son, father to daughter. Um, actually can kind of strengthen your genetics a little bit, but it's a good idea to bring in new genetics into that every once in a while. And about once a year, replace a couple of roosters. That's going to be fine to keep your genetics mixed up. So hopefully that answers your question and puts you at ease a little bit on that. All right, the next, uh, qu well, it's not really a question, but we've got a comment from the viewer, uh, NY Tigris, which I, stand, I assume stands for New York. Um, he's been on my, my comments log several times before. He's a, a, a very frequent viewer of my videos. But what she says is, uh, I tried waste around our tomato plants, and it was great stuff. In my last video, I talked about how I was uh, composting underneath the quail hutches here. Um, what she's saying is she just puts the waste directly on the tomato plants, and it worked just great for her. So great tip there. Thanks for sharing that. Um, I'm still going to go ahead and compost it out a little bit. i got plenty of rabbit manure that I'm using in the garden, so it's not that urgent for me to get the uh, fertilizer on the garden and composting it out a little bit works for me, but hey, it's good to know that you can put it directly on the plants and it's uh, not going to hurt them. I wouldn't go overboard with that. It is pretty high nitrogen stuff. You put too much on there and it could burn your plants, but a little bit here and there isn't going to hurt them. All right, so we've got another uh, question from viewer Clever Kim's Curious. I always have a hard time with that name. It's a tongue twister for me, but I think I got it out right this time. All right, so what she starts off with is uh, talking about uh, a little bit of her hatch rate experience. But she goes on to say that the, roo the rooster that she's had the longest doesn't seem to be interested in the hens at all. Um, that she's got uh, you know, a chick from a newer set of birds. Um, but basically the bottom line is, is that she doesn't think that the uh, male is chasing the females at all, is not even uh, breeding with the females. And she wants to know if she's expecting too much from the bird, if she should swap him out with another bird, if she can find one. You know, that's a good question. I've not personally had that problem. Um, I mean, you can see as they get a little bit more, I mean, they're calm right now. Uh, none of the roosters, hopefully you can see them in there. None of the roosters are really doing anything with the females right now. But So you don't always see that. It may be that it's just, you know, he's a little bit shy and he's just not performing for a crowd maybe. I don't know. Um, but a couple of things you might be able to look for, especially if you've got one rooster and just a couple of birds, is look at the back of their head. If there's feathers being pulled out of the back of their head, that usually indicates that they're, uh, they're breeding just fine. Um, I've got plenty of females and roosters in here and they're mixing pretty well, so I don't have a, a bird with any missing feathers that I can tell to, to show you, but that's a good indicator that your roosters are actually breeding. You know, nothing's gonna hurt to uh, switch them out though, get you another rooster if you're concerned about it or if you're having poor hatch rates, uh, then that would be a good place to go with that. Just uh, switch them out with another rooster and see if that helps improve your hatch rates. So, so I know I can't give you a concrete answer on that, but hopefully that helps you out a little bit anyway. Okay, we got a question here from a viewer by the name of Six Pack Journey. Next. And he's asking a quick question. I'm looking at keeping quail in my garage in South Texas. What are your thoughts on keeping them cool? You know, I honestly have not had any issues with the heat with these guys. They do just fine. And, I, you know, I lived in South, well, I lived in deep East Texas for a while, and everybody down there thought that, well, it doesn't get hot anywhere else in the country. Southwest Missouri, it does get hot. We have well over 100 degree temperature here since about the beginning of June, and now this is September. It's starting to cool off a little bit now, but, you know, these guys are outside, but I had them in the garage all summer last summer. No problems whatsoever, even when it got up above 100 degrees. I think the key really is ventilation, and that's one of the reasons that, 
you know, I have this cage all wide open, um, lots of uh, lots of ventilation for them, uh, and that seems to work pretty well. And of course, keep them uh, keep plenty of water on hand. Don't let them run out of water. If you keep water on hand, keep plenty of ventilation. They seem to do just fine in the heat. I didn't run any extra fans or anything. So hopefully that helps you out a little bit and puts your mind at ease. Let me know if you have a different experience or if you end up having problems with it. Okay, we've got a question here coming from a viewer by the name of Jay Tinnen. And what he's asking me is, how do I pick the birds, the best birds for breeding stock? He said he's heard a lot of methods and he wants to know what I use and at what age do I cycle my birds out and replace them? And also, how old is too old to cook? Several questions there. First of all, let's start off with the easy one. Birds are never too old to cook. Um, you know, they're better, of course, before they hit real, you know, real strong sexual maturity. So six to eight weeks, somewhere right around in there. It might be a little bit tougher, they get older, but it's not that big of a difference. So no problems with that. Um, as far as how I pick which birds that I, I keep for my breeding stock, I do it solely based on weight. The biggest, the bigger the bird, that those are the only ones that I keep. So, I, you know, I don't replace my birds all that frequently, probably about, um, I've addressed it in other videos, uh, but probably about once a year or something like that, um, I'll go ahead and replace them. I don't always replace every bird in there, so there may be some of them in there that are a little bit older because I don't really keep track of them that much. Um, but when I do replace birds, it's just based on weight. I weigh them, the heaviest birds, those are the ones that go into the breeding stock and the rest of them go into the freezer. All right, we've got a question now from a viewer by the name of Coral Soward. Soward, I think, I think, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. I'm terrible with pronunciations. What he's saying is, he first of all, says thank you uh, for your great no-nonsense informative videos. He's in Tasmania, Australia, which is kind of cool that we're reaching across the globe there. Um, he says I've helped him in many ways, so I'm, I'm very glad that I can do that. That's the whole reason I do these videos is to be able to help you guys out. Um, so I'm, I'm always thankful to hear those comments that I've been helpful to you. Love your questions and love these uh, question answer sessions to provide you with more detail. He goes on to say, um, it'd be perfect for me if you do a rundown of your quail watering system, um, especially the connections. All right, so this is the watering system. These are uh, water cups here. You can see as you, uh, as you push down on that, that fills up with water. Now, these won't stay full of water. Like you can see, this one is dry. What the quail do is they come in here and they peck at this. And when they do, you probably can't see that on camera, but it, it puts water in the bottom of it and they drink it out of there and it gives them plenty of water to drink. Okay, so let's look at it from this side right here. You know, you see the water cups there. They just screw into this piece of uh, PVC and this comes with it. It's half inch PVC um, connector. It's just, uh, it's just a short little piece right here with the place where the water cup can screw into that. To, put, to mount it to the cage, actually all I do is stick it right up against the cage and screw the water cup in through the hardware cloth and that's enough to clamp it and hold it on there and it's pretty sturdy. I mean, I'm pulling on it and it's not going anywhere. Um, to connect this together, um, very, very easy, just buy a piece of half inch uh, PVC, cut it to the size that you want and glue it in. And I do that between this one and this one and then again at the end, there's a little bit of a half inch cap that goes on the end that I glued onto the end there. This side right here is where the water is being fed in. So this is a half inch uh, threaded uh, connector. Glues onto the PVC itself and it's got threads on this side right here. Then I bought a half inch brass uh, connector right here. I'll put links to this stuff where you can get that down below. Um, this just screws on to the, uh, to the PVC connector itself and then it's just a matter of uh, connecting my half inch. It's, barbed, uh, it's a barbed connector right here made for half inch hose to go on to. So I just connect that half inch, just slide it right on there and that's it. And then I just run it to, uh, you know, to a five gallon bucket. Now I've got a splitter in here because I feed two different cages with this. But again, it just runs right into uh, the five gallon bucket itself. Another one of these uh, quarter inch, or excuse me, half inch uh, brass connectors right there has a nut on this side that screws onto it that kind of makes a, a clamp on and I siliconed around that to keep it from leaking and that's all there is to it. And this, this hose right here is just a uh, water gauge height for me so I can see without having to open the bucket top here I can see where the water level is. You won't be able to see it on camera because it's kind of hard to see through this tubing but right now if I tap this a couple times there it is right there. The water level is right there right now inside the bucket so I'm a ways from having to fill this up. All right, so I did tell you that if you waited till the end of the video, I had something special for you. Um, the watering cups that I get from my watering system come from a company called Beak Time. 
They've been a great company to deal with. Uh, they fast shipping, very quick communications. I contacted them before I shot this video and let them know that I was going to do an in-depth review of this water system, and they agreed to give my viewers a 20% off sale. So there's a link below where you can get to that sales page, buy the watering cups for 20% off the regular price. If you were to buy them from eBay, Amazon, or any other place, you're going to get them 20% off that. So great deal from that company. Give them some business and uh, show, their, show your appreciation for that. Well, that's about it for this update. So if you have questions or uh, anything else that you want to have covered, you know, leave comments below. Let me know what you'd like to see in next week's video. Um, quail are getting a little bit noisy here right now. Thanks for watching. And uh, as always, God bless.